What's up, everybody? So today is swap day. Uh, we've got the gearbox ready to go in. Uh, we've got the manual pedals installed that I did yesterday. Going to jack the car up. Actually, I think I'm going to take all the center console stuff out first, and then we'll jack the car up and start taking the auto box out. <laughs> Right, I've started by moving the seats back as far as possible and obviously I've done that before I've disconnected the battery because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do it because they're electric seats. So now I'm just going to disconnect the negative terminal make sure nothing shorts out while I'm doing the wiring and stuff in the, underneath on the gearbox. And when you're working with mechanical stuff you want to isolate absolutely everything you can even though it's very unlikely because the keys aren't in, in the ignition or anything but you never know so just be safe. There's quite a few steps here, but I'm going to start with removing this boot off the handbrake. Just clips in, so it's not that hard to take off. Next, I'm going to take these uh, caps off the ends here. There's a little hole or a little gap where you can get a screwdriver in and just pop them off. And then I'm pretty sure there's some bolts behind there I've got to take off. Uh, get that one out. Bolt on that side, bolt on that side. All right, this is, this is a 12 millimeter bolt. All right, oh yeah. It's a weird bolt. And there's a 12 on this side as well. All right. This one's a bit tighter for some reason, I don't know why. I wonder if it goes all the way in, all the way in. Well, maybe it just pulls out from here. Yep. <laughs> Duh, this should just come off now. There's some clips on there. I want to snap them. Oh, my mind's just pull up. Now under this little carpet, the tiniest carpet you've ever seen. Little bits. Uh, two screws there. Oh, they're sh super shallow screws. Rear end is free now, so we'll start in the front. Either side of the front, the console here, we've got two little caps with screws underneath. Now this should free up the front end a little bit, but there's another part we've got to take out on the top. I'm going to use a screwdriver just to pry this ring up here. And that should bring the rest of this out. And then under here we've got some connectors. There's some for the cigarette lighter here. I'm just going to pull those off. And then there's another one. And we can just pull this out. Oh, there's another one. There's two, two sides to the clip. The white side and then the beige side. And they've both got clips on, I don't know which one to press to get it out. <sighs> Alright, it's the white one. Now, inside here, we've got two screws. One on the right here, and then one on the left. I'm going to move those and hopefully that should be it. By the way, the cup holder is a great place to keep all the bolts. I'm notorious for losing these, so good. I think that should be it now. I'm going to pull it from, from the back. See if I can pull it out. There might be some clips at the front. Yeah, there is. You might have just heard them click then. Here, there's clips there and there. So, but you pull them back. You don't pull them. You don't pull them out like this. If you pull on this like this and pull it out, it'll probably snap. To get those out, I just pulled it from here, took a grip, pulled it back. So now it should come out. There we go. Don't worry about that, that was just the um, ashtray. Right, on. That's the center console out. And uh, we've got to start disassembling this now, I think. I don't know. I guess so. So I'm guessing it's this bolt and this bolt. And then that one and then that one. Just all four corners. They look like 10 millimeter. Oh, before I do that, I've got no space to move, so I'm gonna get all this out of the car. This handbrake's well in the way of my shot, but you know where the bolts are. Don't know if that actually loosened anything. Oh, it did. It's loose, but not totally free. Oh, this is actually... Oh, it's clipped on to this. I don't know if it's anything to do with the, the shift. Oh, it must be for these these buttons, which I guess we won't have after this. I don't know how that works. Anyway, we'll unplug this one. Because that's obviously leading to 
of these buttons, maybe. Or something on this centre section. And then this one seems to be also connected to it. Well, these wires are cable tied onto this, so we need to cut those and then we can remove this. There you go. There seems to be another connector here, this one, so I'm going to pull that one out. I'm not sure how it's plugged in, but I'm just going to pull on it and see if it comes out. Oh, these are these ones are for the buttons, actually. I can see they go directly into it. Ah, I've got it. Right, if we push that up, like this. So, here we go. I'm going to pull those out. Maybe that's it. Let me see if we can pull this away now. We can. Nice. I don't know what's underneath though. Oh, it's the linkage. Look, there's the gearbox. Bye. Let's take this pin out. Come on. Ow. It's because it's on an angle. Lift it up a bit. Should be able to wiggle that now, actually. There we go. So yeah, that's it now for the inside of the car. I'm gonna start taking the gearbox out. So I've put the car up on axle stands, four of them. It's on four of them, one, two, three, four. And I've put the wheels there, um, the front wheels, just to make sure that, well, you know, extra safety and all. Jack's still at the back on the diff, but I'll probably be moving that as well to the front at some point on this front cross member where I usually put it. Now I'm gonna take the covers off. There's a few, co well, there's a few. That one right there, I'm going to take off. This one right here, which is the main... Oh, it's not the main engine cover, but it's the second one down. Um, and then there's a heat shield I've got to take off, and then I'm probably going to have to disconnect the exhaust um, and then drain the, the gearbox of the oil. Now, I'm not going to film any of the taking the covers off and all that stuff. There's no point, because it's just simple stuff. All right, I've got all the covers off that I want to get off. I just want to show you this. This knot was behind one of the plastic covers. This one was exposed to the elements along with all of these ones. Look at what the UK weather does to cars. All right, let's drain the gearbox. Uh, it's 14 millimeter for this one. Ay, 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 ay. I just drained the oil. I didn't get a drop anywhere. It's just, it's a sign. It's a sign. So I noticed on George's video, one of the first things he does is he removes some sort of bolt behind here. This is a little, eh, I don't know, cover grommet thingy. And then there seems to be a bolt behind that. I don't know what it's for. I'm sure he mentioned something to do with the torque converter. Looks like a 12 millimeter. I was wrong, it's 13. I was wrong, it's a 14. Oh, it moved. What does that mean? Do you know the back? I can't. Hmm, interesting. I know that's the torque converter there, that silver thing behind this. The torque converter... Also has a gear look, is that flywheel? I don't even know. It's got teeth, so yeah, it must have. It's a very light one. It's thin. Oh, that is tight. Okay, we'll just break the bar. Hopefully this comes up. Oh, that was pretty easy. I think that we've got six of these to do. I don't know if I'm going to turn the engine to get to the other one. There's one near I left it in park. I hope that's not the main issue. Alright, I've took that engine cover off and I'm going to use a breaker bar here on... Yeah, alright, that doesn't fit on me. Alright, let me get around you. There's the crank puller here, I've took this bottom engine cover off and I'm just going to turn that clockwise to turn the torque converter around. Hey, it is working. Alright, there's the next bolt. So we'll take this one out. So just turn on the crank until I get to a new bolt and then I'm just taking them out and then repeating the process and moving it to this specific area. So if I pull it left to undo it anti-clockwise, it also pulls the uh, pulls it around to the left. So 
I'm making sure I'm close to the edge here so that that won't happen. Or it'll happen a little bit, but not much. So I can undo that one. So I'm going to repeat that now for the rest of the bolts. Right, I've tried my hardest to get this plastic thing off and a few of the bolts have come out, but this one hasn't. It's really, really, really annoying me. So I, I can't get out, it's impossible without actually snapping it off there and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to have to try and get the drive shaft out um, by just bending this piece down. So there's four, four 14 millimeter um, bolts here holding the, the drive shaft into the diff. So I'm going to undo that now. Really help if this plastic wasn't in the way. Can't see anything because of this plastic. That's it. I've had enough. Ripped it off because it's just ridiculous. Okay, that that fourteen's too fat. I can't literally can't get it on there. Oh, gonna chew it. No. Oh, why is everything so tight? How how does anyone get that off? There we go. I don't care about not using impact stuff. Yeah, these sockets aren't supposed to be for impact gun, but I really, at this point, just don't care. <laughs> it's so incredibly frustrating. But that's the only one that fits in there. Like, the, the impact ones are too fat. That's one bolt out. I I'm not really sure how to turn this. No, it's locked because the handbrake's on. No, oh, it just turns. Oh, that's annoying. Yes, this is what we like it. This is what we want. Now those are out, <laughs> and I've got over my tantrum. Um, I'm gonna take these out. These are just like the bracket for the center section of the um, drive shaft. There's one here, and then one on the side. That might be a little bit difficult to get to because the exhaust is here, but we'll find a way. We always do. Anyway, they're 14 millimeter bolts, and they come out no problem. Okay, it needs a longer extension for this. <sighs> Oh, just about. I think we have to hammer this out now. Oh dear me. Well, it's off. All right, now I've got to pull it from this end to get it out of the gearbox. So, good luck to me doing that underneath the car. Let's give it a go. There we go. Alright, that's the drive shaft out. Okay, I've put the jack underneath the mountain bracket for the gearbox. Just to make sure it doesn't drop on my head. Right, well, it's but... <laughs> um, I see George do it, and this is what I'm going for. Anyway, these two bolts and these two bolts are 40 millimeter ones. They're the ones I'm going to take out right now. Oh, nice and easy. That's what we want. There we go. Now I'm going to slowly lower the jack. Now we're going to get to whatever hydraulic um, connections that we can, starting with this one. Um, so we're going to undo it here, probably, probably this one. Then we're going to get this one here, and that's all I can see for now. So I'm just going in from two different angles, going in from here, and then, and then going around the other side of the exhaust and then 
doing it again. I'm just repeating that process. It is taking forever, but it's working. This pipe here, this one, is just, it's impossible to get to. I'm gonna cut it instead, um, if I can find something to cut it with. It's in such an awkward spot, and it just won't come undone. I haven't got any leverage on the spanner, so let's try and cut it. The other one came off eventually, using that um, little technique I showed. I just spoke to George, and he said that I can cut the bolt, um, I can cut the pipes. But obviously, yeah. I can cut them here. I don't know why I was thinking about cutting them up here. And then we should be good then. There's only those two hydraulic pipes then we're gonna get started on disconnecting the electric. Okay, let's see how this goes. Hopefully it doesn't blow up on my face. Probably wasn't very safe. Remember that time I said I didn't spill any oil on the driveway? Well, that's changed. Okay, electrical connectors. So, there is one here, which I've already undone. Oh, I've undone them all. I'm not sure what they all do. There's this one at the back, and then there's this... And then there's this big one here, and then there's two clips. A clip there, and a clip there, and then there's one more connector here. So that's three connectors and two clips. I can't see any more, and I don't think there are any more. But that's the pipe sorted and the electrical connections um, disconnected. I think I'm going to cut the oil filler pipe as well, because that's, I don't know how much of a nightmare that is to get out, but it might just be easier to cut it, to save me time. This is the aftermath of the pipe work. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to get the box out today. I already had a late start because of the rain. And I've had bolts and pipes and all sorts of other crap to deal with. So I'll pick it up again tomorrow. But the last thing we're going to do now is remove the ground wire from the gearbox just because it's connected to the chassis as well. It needs to be off so that we can get the box out. And that ground wire is right here. So we're just going to take that out. It looks like a 14. It is a 14. And it's tighter than I thought. Hey. There we go. Shaking the whole gearbox. That's a really long bolt. Okay, I don't know if we're going to need that later. I'm just going to tuck it in here for now. Actually, the last thing I'm going to do is cut this uh, oil filler pipe. Okay, here we go. probably should have known that that was going to happen, <sighs> but I'm tired and I forgot. <laughs> oh, why is it so much? That's it for today. I'm absolutely broken being under the car. It would be a billion times better if I was doing this with a lift. I almost, I almost regret it. One of the main issues is being under the car and doing all this. Um, I've had two dislocated shoulders in the, in the past. And it, it really saw like being under the car and having to twist and turn and do a load of awkward positions just to get bolts out. It's not that fun. Uh, I really wish I had a lift and a garage and a place to do all this stuff, but I've got to work with what I've got. Pretty much what I should have expected, but I never do expect it. I'm always like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this in this amount of time. Especially getting all the angles is really hard sometimes. I wasn't able to get some. Thinking about it now, I'm actually pretty happy with the progress I've made, considering that I haven't got a lift. Plus the weather. Weather stayed nice, which is rare because it's England. But that's all we're going to do today. Um, just taking the box out tomorrow. That's it. I think we're ready to undo the bell housing bolt. The top ones are going to be pretty difficult to get to. Well... It doesn't look like we're going to get much done today, <laughs> if this continues. The rain... The rain has stopped and the floor's dry, so um, I'm going to use some massive extensions now to get the bell housing bolts out. Not a job I'm looking forward to. 
So I'm using three 250 millimeter extensions, half inch extensions, the breaker bar, a reducer from half inch to three quarters, and then either a 14 or a 17 millimeter bolt. I'll tell you the bolt sizes once I've got the, um, the gearbox out because I'm not 100% sure. I know they're different. Ask me how I know, I've just tried. And tried to get one of the bolts out for like 20 minutes and turns out that I was using a 14 and the bolt was 17 because I couldn't see it. So this is what my contraption looks like. I can show you a little bit, but I won't be able to show you too much. You won't be able to see, but I'm working on this bolt at the moment. This one here, we'll focus, that one. So that is a 17 millimeter one. Um, and there's one at the top above that as well. If you can see in between. Anyway, you get the idea. So I'm gonna start working on these now. Um, don't know how useful it's gonna be me filming it. I'll film it anyway. You're not gonna be able to see me doing a whole lot here, but you'll see me struggling, so that's good. All right, let's give this a go. I've already managed to crack one on the left side, a 14 mil up top. Not the very top one though. Let's go in. Yeah, gonna get that top one first. I want to leave four at the bottom, like George said. Okay, we're on that bolt now, so I'm gonna try and twist it loose. Let's see if we can break it loose. Oh, this is rough. Yes. First bolt completely out. Right, I'm gonna repeat this for the rest of them. It's just gonna be really awkward, but I'm not gonna film anymore because it's gonna be ages. This has been on for 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, see you later. So the four worst bolts are out now, the four at the top. So two at the very top, and then two either side of that just below. 114 and 317. Not gonna lie, it was probably the worst experience of my automotive ventures so far. <laughs> I'd like to think that that is the worst part of the entire job. <laughs> Might have speak, spoken too soon there, but <laughs> we'll see. Now, the four most accessible bolts are still in there and I've took the ground bolt out. Um, so that makes nine in total. I'm going to put the jack underneath the gearbox and then we'll take those four out and we'll drop the gearbox. That should be it. Hopefully I've undone everything that I need to do. Hydraulics, electrics, and all the bolts. These are the bolts that are left in. There's a 17 there. There's a 14 there. And on the other side, there's a 17 there and a 14 there at the bottom. So two 14s on the bottom, two 17s just above those. The reason I've left those four in is based on the advice of George. And in his video, I love what he says. Just check this out. All the bolts on the top are undone. I left these four. They are easily accessible. If you undo all of them on an automatic transmission, the chances are the gearbox is just going to fall out and kill you. So you always want to <laughs> three or four. I'll be sure to keep that in mind. Anyway, I've put the jack under the cotton out. I'm going to take the gearbox out that far side. Hopefully it'll fit. I'm pretty sure the car is high enough for it to fit, but that looks pretty, that looks okay. We'll see, we'll find out. Now we're gonna go ahead and get that 17 out. I'm gonna use the gun, hopefully it'll be all right. Yeah, it's a 17, I've got the 14 socket on. Much easier. So now we can actually reach this bolt. Maybe this, this jack might be a little bit far forward, to be honest. I'm gonna go for this bolt next. The other 17, let's see if this comes off. Yeah, got it. Right, let's take that one up. Okay, so this is, this should come down now. I'm hoping I've got all the bolts out that I think I need to get out. Let's lower the jack down and see if it comes out. Of course it didn't. Okay, I found the missing link. This bolt right here, just above the pipes, is the last bolt holding this in. So 
gonna try and get this out. It's gonna be a little bit awkward just because these pipes are in the way. In hindsight, I would have cut the pipes here instead of cutting them there, but hey ho. Let's see if we can get it out. Okay, that fits on, but we haven't got a whole lot of leverage here. Might need to hit it with a hammer or something. I could push it, I don't want it. I don't want to go directly under it, that's the problem. Ah, there we go. Okay, that one's out. That should be it now. Let's try and lower it again. No. Oh. What's going on? There must be another bolt. Right, so I took a picture with my phone and you can see all the bolts are out except this one here. So that is uh, between this one. Well, it's not that high up, basically. So let's go and see if we can find it. It's in a really, it's a really awkward one because it's right behind this part of the chassis here, or this part of the tunnel. I don't know how how much space there is in between there and whether or not I can get up under here. Let's go and have a look. Okay, I see it right there. Let me see. There we go. Okay, I'm sure we have to get to that. Looks like uh, 17, I guess. No, it's a 14. Or maybe, yeah, it's a 14. There we go. Seeing the gearbox move then. <laughs> so it's definitely coming away. The extension's off, but the socket is still stuck on there. <laughs> That is so annoying. Ah, got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Now the bolt should come out. God, God, why would you put a bolt there? It's ridiculous. There's no room, because the tunnel's in the way. Oh, my neck. Right. This is the moment of truth. It's coming out, 100%. It's, it's free, it's free. Oh, there's an electrical connector there, I can see it. One that I haven't. I'm done. Let's see if we can show you. Right here. See this electrical connector, the grey one? I haven't undone that one, so I'm going to do that now. It's coming out. The jack might be a bit too far forward, so I'm going to try and move it a bit. Right, probably won't be able to see this, but I'm going to try and get that grey connector off. There's a clip on the other side, the opposite side to what you're looking at now. I'm pretty sure I can reach from inside the car through the hole and get that clip off. Well, it's coming out, but it's coming out wrong. Never mind. Lower it slow. Probably gonna drop. Well, it's kind of out. Okay, it's out. It wasn't a nice experience. <laughs> But, uh, uh, this is what we're left with now. There's the flex plate that we've got to remove next time we work on the car. Uh, which shouldn't be an issue. Just to whip those bolts out with the gun. I think there's 10 bolts, no, eight bolts there. All the wiring isn't needed, so we can bunch that up and tie that somewhere. And I think we wire the reverse switch to this one. I'm going to get rid of those pipes from the other side. They lead to a heat exchanger on the engine. And we're going to get rid of this uh, oil filler pipe as well. All right, we're recording this three days after the last part of the video because it rained for three days. So now we're going to take the flex plate out. I don't think we need it to be in any specific orientation here. So I'm just going to remove the eight... 40 millimeter bolts. Um, we'll worry about it later when we put the flywheel in. Here's the last one. Make sure it doesn't fall out on my, on my head. So there's this little plate first, then the actual flex plate. And then another one, another little ring. Now we've taken the flex plate out, we can see the rear main seal, which we are gonna be changing. And I think they look like 10 or 12 millimeter bolts there. 
six of them that we've got to take out and then after we've removed that we'll clean it all up take the rear main out put the new one in and plonk it back in you can see the starter motor here as well it doesn't look like it's going to be much fun getting that in position and bolting it but we'll find out all right so i'm trying to get this done relatively quickly because it's going to rain again all right so let's get these uh 10 millimeter bolts out They are pretty loose. Not loose, but not tight. So easy to get out. Now I'm gonna get a pry bar in somewhere and try and loosen it off. There is a little indent here um, where you can put your pry bar in. That's good. There we go. Pull that off. The seal actually looks really good. Don't know if it's been changed in the past, but anyway, we're gonna replace it. I'm gonna clean this surface off around here so that we can put some new RTV on later on. If I'm honest, I would not recommend this. Um, it was pretty miserable trying to get those bolts out. <laughs> I'm glad I did it though. And I'm happy that I've gone through this process, particularly doing it by myself. I think I'm a little bit over halfway there because I've, you know, done the pedals and took the old gearbox out. But then I do have to fit the flywheel and the clutch and everything. But shouldn't be that bad, I don't think. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, that is the end of this video. Uh, it's going to rain for the next two days. <laughs> so I'm going to start editing the uh, Bellhouse and Swap video, the which I've already started editing, the pedals install and, well, this video. I think this is going to be the most rewarding thing I've done on the car so far, more than the engine uh, maintenance stuff, more than anything else, the brakes and coilovers, because this is a really, well, the biggest job I've ever taken on. It is a huge task, especially to do in the driveway. Uh, so I'm looking forward to finishing it and having a manual car. It's going to be so worth it. Thank you so much for supporting all my videos. Uh, thanks for watching this one. Uh, follow me on Instagram. That's where you're going to get all the updates. Everything that I don't post on YouTube, I post on my Instagram page. I'll leave a link in the description for it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. I'm so close to 4,000. Might be at 4,000 by the time this one uploads, but... Uh, thank you to everyone who watches. I hope that these videos are useful. You um, follow on the project and stuff. It's, it's really cool. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you later. Peace. Got so many cuts and bruises. My shoulders are killing me. My neck's killing me. But it's gonna be worth it. <laughs>